anyone to get off their darkest ground But gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view Wow! That is so cool, like the conversion overhead where it like collides together. Are you still in pro mode? Good, because it just, it looks, to me, it looks better, right? Like when it's out of pro mode in this current state. If you get, I guess, try to get pictures of, on regular mode of just the entire sky, like just back and forth, different locations, because I'm doing video right now. This is incredible. We are currently, what time is it? 10.58 p.m. on Friday, May 10th, 2024. The mountains, the blue mountains of northeastern Oregon. I've been captioned, whoa, what was that? I would have sworn I just saw like a flash of northern lights towards the south here. Whoa. Are you seeing that? This is incredible. Uh, get, get your phone on the south right now. It's like shimmering and flashing. It's harder to pick up on video of the shimmering, but it's happening. Do you see that wave? Like... Waving? <laughs> because I'm seeing it shimmering right now. Oh, yeah. I see that. Wow. Yeah, so get photos on that because the video is hard to pick it up, but get photos on that. Because that's some, um, that's definitely something. Oh, wow. Starting to weaken a little bit. I mean, the shimmering is still going, but just around me, I can tell it's a little weaker. But the video is still really, and this is due east right here behind this tree. Wow. Almost tripped over something there, a rock. Wow. I would love to use manual focus in pro mode, but for some reason the pro mode settings aren't light enough, yet the regular mode on my phone can capture it. <laughs> Unlike the photos from before in pro mode, that's how I was capturing it, uh, I first saw it come in or shortly after 9 p.m. on the phones, and then we've been seeing uh, sh uh, gray pillars, white gray pillars ever since about probably 9.30, but they had no color to them. And I will say all this video that I'm getting right now is basically what my eyes see. So at nearly 11 p.m. is when my eyes are actually picking up the color. See how it works on. I wonder if it works. No, it's not working so well on front. Um, but yeah, uh, if you've been following, either saw my video in September or saw my Instagram photos in September, I captured the Northern Lights for the first time, but my eyes only saw gray white pillars of faint light while the camera was the thing that saw the colors. Yet this is the first time that not only my eyes are seeing the colors because a geomagnetic storm is the strongest it's been since October 2003, 
not only my eyes are picking up the color, but the photos are 10 times more bright than what they were in September. And not only that, I can capture the, uh, uh, the video of the colors for the first time. Because even when the photos captured it earlier this evening and in September, uh, it was not strong enough, the storm was not strong enough to capture the colors on video only on photo because you had to turn the ISO and shutter speed so high. So I will tell you with video, it is basically exactly what I see from the human eye. But if you check out my photos, um, that's definitely more of a surreal version of what I actually see. And you can see it is now dying down. Colors are much dimmer. I still see all these pillars of light all around and I still see some dim color, but for the most part, we are going back to where the photos can only see the color and we are fading out on video and with my eyes. So man, well, this is this like what seven minutes, maybe 10, I guess we're close to 10 minutes now straight of just pure color all around that I can capture with the eyes and with video on camera. Wow, that was absolutely incredible. But we are now starting to die down, and the issue is when it when it gets dimmer, it goes out of focus much more. But for some reason, the pro video mode just cannot get bright enough, and I'm not sure why. Um, but the pro photo mode sure did. And then when this started almost about 10 minutes ago, I didn't even need to use pro video mode. It looked even better on regular, or excuse me, pro photo mode. It looked so much better actually once it got to this strength to where i could see it on regular photo mode now we're pointing towards the south it is now diminished here's the east it is basically starting to go back to normal and here's the north a little bit more left but wow this is absolutely insane over here um it is now 11:05 p.m and we are watching this geomagnetic, excuse me, geomagnetic storm of KP9 um, in G5, which, like I said, first time that this has happened since October 2003. And by the way, that's the strongest that you can get. That just means the further north you are, the stronger the northern lights are. Oh, I'm seeing more waving over here towards the southeast. We're getting more shimmering. Can't really capture it on video, though that is going to be uh, stuck to photos. But I will overlay some of the shimmering that we have on the photos. It may not be to the point where you can really tell it's shimmering because it's just probably re a really bright light that stands out on more of the other lights. But it's I can't... Uh, hard to describe but even though that we are losing the color and we really only have color left over on the north we are getting tons of shimmering directly up above um, slightly on the south east corner of the sky but really it's just all up above um, my dad's also out here you can't really see him but what do you think about all this Oh, this is awesome. God's light show. Yes, absolutely. I was losing hope on seeing the colors. Is although we've been out here for a few hours now and we've been able to capture the colors on camera, I really, I would, I assumed that we would be able to see the colors with our eyes, but um, I was losing hope there for a little bit just because all I saw was those gray white pillars for a while which i experienced in september but in september the kp only was six to seven um but i will tell you the kp has been mostly eight as we've been out here 
Um, occasionally it got stronger and, and occasionally it got weaker, but it's been mostly eight all evening and really all day. Um, with some of those stronger waves coming in at nine and weaker waves coming in at five occasionally. But, um, even though that I was used to those gray white pillars of light, they until about, um, 15 minutes ago, um, until I saw the lights with my eyes, I will tell you that those, uh, gray white pillars were much stronger. September was much fainter, which makes sense because the KP was only between six and seven. Um, so I was already amazed at how, how much, um, more exposed those great white, white pillars were. But like I said, I was losing hope to see color with my eyes because my phone was capturing all this color, which I was used to in September, but then the color just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And then all of a sudden, as you saw, uh, through the video portion of this, this is basically what our eyes were saying. This is definitely an experience, once in a lifetime experience, especially if you don't live. It, it This happens very regularly out, out towards places like Canada, especially northern Canada, Alaska, places like that, towards the North Pole, towards the South Pole, Antarctica. But, you know, if you live in the U.S., it's like this is one of the most... Um, when many of those experiences that are just once in a lifetime, like I said, I was able to capture it on camera in September for the first time ever, but I never thought in a million years at this exact same location near my, or at my house, actually, there's my house right there, that I would be able to see the colors with my own eyes and capture it on video. As you can see now, we are basically done with the colors, it looks like, um, but I am still seeing tons of shimmering and waving which you cannot see on camera currently on the video portion but like i said you can capture it amazingly on the photo but uh and there's the east right there notice actually it looks a little more brighter on the east it was getting dimmer now it's kind of circling back so um absolutely incredible and this is perfect. It is a completely... Oh, now we're getting a little bit more light on the east yet again. It is a completely clear night. There's not one cloud in the sky right now. Um, which is absolutely incredible. And the moon was only 12% illuminated. And that moon actually sets in about a half hour. But it's already behind the trees over here on the west horizon. So it's not even visible anymore and it's it is not affecting our viewing whatsoever so it is just a perfect night for this to happen um absolutely incredible on I, like i said on the video portion it's really hard to see but uh i'm pointing right above me and, it, and it's it, it almost looks like it's i'm gonna be panning my camera back here to the uh east so you can actually see something in the north over here but um, as I was saying, when I point it up, although the video portion can't see it, I mean, it looks like, um, I mean, if you're, uh, if you've ever watched like any sort of family Christmas movie, like the Santa Claus or, um, Polar Express, I mean, anything kind of in that arena, it looks like that, like to where, you know, visual artists and editors of those type of movies would make the North Pole look absolutely crazy with northern lights and how like there would be like several different lines um like beaming down and then coming together that could almost look like a star or something like a huge star that it's almost the size of um like <laughs> The top of this tree right here, like it's it's just it's, it's extremely hard to explain, but just imagine that, and then it widens, it widens, it's kind of it's close together, higher up, and then once you get lower, closer to the horizon, it like widens on each side, and then that's kind of gray and white, but then once it widens and gets towards here, for example, it's colored, so it's it's really crazy just to see. Um, I kind of hope we get a little bit more of an increase here again because once it gets dimmer, like I've been saying, the video 
uh, loves to go out of focus. And for some reason, I can't manually focus um, in pro mode because it doesn't show up in pro mode, um, which is kind of odd. But um, anyway, so that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Um, and there's some sort of a star or planet right there that you can see. Um, so yeah, we've get, get, been getting tons of pictures through my phone, through my dad's phone. He's been focused more towards the north and west, and I've been focused more towards the north and east. So we've been getting a lot of awesome pictures um, over here. And like I said, the minute that I started to see uh, the light start to pop up, I started recording because I actually had my... Um, gopros running because i assumed that this would happen at first but then i had them rolling for an hour and i was like oh i don't see anything with my eyes yet meaning the gopro in video mode would not see the colors they would only see the colors through my uh photos that i've been taking and of course they died the minute that the colors would have shown up on video because i want to get a cool time lapse of nothing and then it just appears but i believe at the start of this video um I at least got some sort of increase, but as I recall, it was already <laughs> it was already bright by the time I uh, start, stopped taking pictures with my phone and and uh, just went into video mode here because I was attempting to go into pro video and I tried that over and over, just wouldn't work. I'm like, I should try regular mode and look at that. And geez, we are getting another increase again. I am back to seeing color with my eyes again as you can see through the phone here uh it is it is just not stopping so here i'm pointing towards the northeast right now that looks the absolute brightest right now of those greens this is due east right here due north there and then here's northwest um incredible Let's see if we get more colors popping up on the south again wow here we go. We're increasing yet again. I don't even know what to say. Like, God is absolutely incredible. Like, um, I would say I average, like, at least once a month, if not more than a once a month. I For the past, geez, two years now, uh, I go outside to check for the Northern Lights because I'm a big... As you know, I'm a big weather guy, and I've gotten a little, really into space weather in the past couple of years. And I have a KP tracker, so whenever it gets to like the lowest that point that we could ever capture the northern lights, I'm always out here. So, like I said, I average at least once a month. I swear for the past two years straight, if not more, depending on how many episodes we have. But it either ends up um, the only time, like I said, I've been successful was last September, 2023. Um, but like I said, my eyes only saw the faint great white pillars and my camera was the only thing that captured the colors, but it was so incredible. It was my first experience and I thought that was insane. But every other time in the past two years, it's either been too cloudy when KP has been high enough or it's, um, um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Um, or if it's not too cloudy, it's just... It's too dim to where I would even see the pillars of light um, with my eyes of that like faint, uh, excuse me, um, gray and white, and it would, and I could only capture it through my phone. Again, the only exception for that being today and the weaker storm we had in September. But like I said, every other time it just. It just, I either got nothing at all, or I was lucky to get some faint colors through the phone. But this is absolutely incredible that I'm actually seeing this with my eyes in Oregon. Wow. Absolutely incredible. So I guess that kind of tells you something. I, I'm not currently on the KP tracker. I check it like all the time. In fact, I've been checking it for several days this week because I... I had a feeling, based on some of the data that I was looking at, that tonight could be very special, and I was absolutely right. Um, I will say NOAA finally got on the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center. NOAA finally got on the train um, 
on the Northern Lights train, I feel like about 48 hours ago, they finally said it could be strong enough to where, you know, we could actually see it. Um, but I would, that was like two nights ago, but I've been keeping an eye on this before they even talked about it about four nights ago and from another source that I was looking at. And um, I don't know what it is. A lot of people know that I do forecast the weather for Oregon across various regions in Oregon. Um, but I will say that um, I, I've noticed a trend with NOAA in their particular forecast. Um, I feel like I, I, I feel like the the University of excuse me University of Alaska Aurora Tracker is slightly more accurate. Um, again, that varies. Sometimes NOAA is more accurate with their forecast, but in, at least in terms of a long range idea, I feel like it has a slightly better output. Um, not all the time. Like for example, today it was actually weaker than what uh, actually happened. And yeah, true, Noah did that as well, but at least yesterday, Noah was stronger than the Al University of Alaska tracker. It just really depends how you look at it, but what I would say is even more accurate, and this is just based on my usage this week, so this isn't like Noah and the University of Alaska where I, you know, have been looking at both for two years now. But specifically, I believe it's auroraforecast.com, uh, this is what I was talking about earlier this week that I thought Friday night would be uh, uh, potentially awesome because of that forecast site. Days ago, it called a 10 out of 10 um, activity. And again, KP only goes up to 9 and the, the geomagnetic storm scale only goes up to 5. But it just, it, it just ranks it 0 out of 10. And it said intense aurora 10 out of 10 for tonight several days ago. Um, and it just kept that prediction and I was absolutely right. But with Noah specifically, I will tell you that, um, there's been a lot of times where they've over predicted these storms and we don't even get to storm level. Like last night, 24 hours ago, I think Noah forecasted five or six actually. Um, and it only got to two or three. Um, and I'm used to that happening because like I said, I go out, like I've been saying, like it, at least once if not more a month or two years straight. And that's been a very, um, high occurrence and I just miss out <laughs> and then nothing really happens. Um, but I will say that there, there has been several times where Noah has correctly predicted the strength of the storm, but I will tell you, I feel like more often than not it's just it, one way or the other it's they either overdo it or they underdo it and it's kind of a even more of a last minute thing to where we kind of get surprised uh, like I said 24 hours ago they definitely underdid it um, so that that definitely has been the trend for the past couple years but I will tell you that sometimes um, they do occasionally they actually really do hit the mark uh, but the difference is every single time I have seen them hit the mark down to the KP value, I, I've been seeing it's any it averages from, I don't know, four to six, four to eight hours behind is I will tell you, there's been numerous times where it has gotten to six, seven, eight, but it's been during the day. And I thought that same thing was going to happen tonight because I believe around 9 p.m. or so was their target that we could start getting into that t territory. Yet, I think it was 1 p.m. today when KP8 actually started and then we skyrocketed to 9 peaking this afternoon when it was all light over here. Yet, the other side of the world saw an awesome show. And I have experienced that the more times that happens... Uh, it's harder to regenerate another substorm to then, even if it weakens, it can come back. And that is very, um, uh, that happens a lot. But for it to happen in the afternoon like that, I will tell you that there's been numerous times that that's happened and it's much harder to keep that energy going at night. But tonight has been the exception. So even though Noah was, uh, hours, um, behind on that prediction, 
by the grace of God, it regenerated when it got dark here. So I will say that this has been absolutely incredible experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I look at so many sources. I look at NOAA. I look at um, Soft Surf News, which... Uh, serve, excuse me, softservenews.com. That is one of the most reliable things that you can get. But the issue is that is their prediction only goes out about 15 minutes. So it's a it's a great thing to where like what are we gonna do like soon? And then Noah, they also have Noah's tracker that goes out about an hour, which sometimes contradicts Soft Serve News. But overall, they're both great tools to see what's happening with in the next 15 minutes to an hour with uh, the NOAA's tool on there as well. So both of those things I absolutely recommend. If it wasn't for those sources, we wouldn't have been able to um, really get down to the minute on when this could happen. So, uh, but I will say for things looking kind of far out, NOAA, like I said, sometimes does really great and sometimes just absolutely bombs the picture. But I will say in terms of consistency, uh, like I, at least this past week, University of Alaska, and I have had some good um, experiences with the University of Alaska. I feel like a little bit more than uh, NOAA in somewhat the longer term. Plus they go out like 20 days and NOAA only goes out like three. So anyway, those are some great sources. If you want to see the Northern Lights, obviously the further north you are, the better it gets for sure. And you can you can see that it was it was it was diminishing, but then it's kind of coming back a little bit again. This is this is uh, east right here. This is north. Again, nowhere near is again. This is the south uh, perimeter over here of our um, property, but. Um, Obviously, it's nowhere near where it was when I uh, started this video, but definitely still um, enough to where my eyes and the video can even pick it up. So all I got to say is absolutely crazy um, experience. Um, I saw my first total solar eclipse a month ago, and then God also then sends us this, which is just crazy, but... I hope you kind of enjoy this little thing. Um, I just kind of, I know it's probably not that clear because uh, in regular mode here, even though that's the only thing I can capture, uh, it's bright enough to capture. It's also not as focused. <laughs> um, so if you want to see my pictures of the Northern Lights, head over to my Instagram at Gabriel J. Curtis. I'm probably going to be posting some on the YouTube community tab too. That's a, he that's probably such a, brighter picture and even more insane than this but at least this gives a better idea to what our eyes actually see anyway wow absolutely incredible i think i was i was going into this earlier but i kind of lost my train of thought and i just moved on to talking about different uh Aurora and KP trackers and stuff, but I think where I was going with uh, my original train of thought was usually like when these episodes happen, and including the one that I was actually able to capture for the first time um, in September, is they only last, you know, anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours has been the trend. I mean, not only in the times that I just have not seen it. But even the one time that I saw the gray-white pillars in September and uh, got the crazy photos, which are nothing, by the way, compared to this, compared to what I'm going to be posting this time around. But um, even with that, it was like, you know, a lot of times you can have substorms where they they could last for 15 minutes, they could last for a half an hour, they could last for 45 minutes, and then, then everything goes away, and then it could come back in that duration. Sometimes the duration is, you know, maybe as much as an hour or two of nonstop activity, and then maybe it does come back again, but I feel like the trend has been the longer the substorm is, uh, the harder it is that it is for it to come back and regenerate or at the very least the 
harder than it is to continue the duration that it was at originally. And tonight is one example of how that is just not um, always true. <laughs> but it's also an example of how rare this is too. Because like I've been saying, that has been the trend as I've been tracking this for a couple of years now. And it's completely defied uh, any sort of rule that um, I established with that. So it is definitely one in a lifetime experience right here. Um, because I, like I said, other than it went down to 5 KP, like I think between maybe 2 and 3 PM this afternoon, or maybe 2.30 to 3 PM this afternoon, something like that. I think it was only down for like a half hour to only 5 KP. And then that happened here um, I think only twice this evening. Um, I, th I believe that happened around 7.30 to 8 p.m. And then I believe again, um, maybe an hour ago or so, maybe two hours ago for only like a half hour. But other than those like three 15 to 30 minute intervals where it didn't even die out completely with the storm because uh, by Noah's... Um, you know, um, what am I trying to say there? Um, what they define as a storm, KP5 is actually the lowest KP that can qualify for a storm level. So, and that was the lowest it got down to for those 15 to 30 minute intervals that only happened three times in the last at least 12 hours since it started up. So that's incredible because that means for the past you know, 10 to 12 hours, other than those three times, it has been constant activity. Um, obviously, a lot of that activity was during the day where I can't see it in the U.S., but I will say that trend is absolutely still the case once the sun went down, even though for the first couple of hours it was only visible on the phones. Um, so, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Absolutely incredible. It looks like it's starting to try, kind of wind down again, but um, I can't see as much color, but I'm still seeing those crazy pillars to where it like just collides in the middle right overhead. Like I've been saying, like it just looks almost like a Christmas movie and it looks like a big like star figure, figure, excuse me. It's like crazy. Um, but yeah. It is now um, 11.30, and it is definitely dying down again. Um, but like you've been seeing over the past half hour, it sure likes to go back and forth. So it could happen again, absolutely. Um, but at least right this second, 11.30 p.m. is starting to die down for sure. But other than the, you know, occasional moments where it kind of dies down, it looks like it never completely diminished <laughs> to our eyes <laughs> or the video camera for this entire, what has it been now? It's been like almost 45 minutes other than just a few times where it went really dim to where the eyes really couldn't see much. But other than those like occasional moments, it's been pretty steady for about 45 minutes now, which again, absolutely incredible that it was even lasting longer than that for photos, but let alone what the eyes see and the video for it to last this long. I mean, I feel like this may be unheard of other than, you know, in the, in the other territories in like Canada and Alaska, but for this to last this long, is already crazy enough. Um, but for this to be even in Oregon, even in a northern U.S. state, I feel like this is unheard of, even if we were uh, to get to this strength again or even a lower strength, because even at KP6 is is the lowest the KP can be generally that I can see the faint gray white pillars. And for reference, we're like between 8 and 9 right now. Um, and generally to pick it up on camera, I mean, it, it, it could be as low as like four or something like that to pick up some faint colors on camera. So, wow. And that, 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 that gives you at least a pretty good idea, at least in the Northwestern U.S. here. 
So if it's four to pick up on camera for from faint colors, then it's two more scales up to maybe see a little bit of um, pillar activity, although no color. So that's like a two KP difference. And then it's kind of the same thing too. Once we're between about eight and nine is when we can actually see the colors. Um, and then not only the colors jump crazy on the intensity on the camera specifically between four and six, but even more so between six and eight. And like I said, that's your window, at least here specifically in Oregon, for not only the eyes to pick it up, but for to actually capture it on video, unless, unless you obviously have um, a professional camera that can do as much in the video department with those ISO and shutter speed settings as you could with photo, but specifically filming on my Samsung Galaxy S24 uh, Ultra. Um, it's really, um, this is kind of how it is um, with the, with the uh, amount of video you can get. Like I said, it's a pretty good comparison to what the eyes actually see. My dad's still over here. What kind of pictures are you getting? That's absolutely awesome. I'm so in pro mode. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then it's starting it's starting to intensify yet again. To where I'm starting to see more colors again. Wow. I just am impressed that it's lasted this long. <laughs> wow. And there's such a variance, which is I yeah. mean, just extraordinary in every every picture you take. Yep. Especially if you're on pro mode, because at least for us specifically, we've had a really a lot of luck this evening with um, with ISO around a hundred, give or take. But like like he said, there's so much variance that sometimes we have to go up to 160 and then come back down to 80. But for the most part, you know, give or take 100 in the ISO on ultra-wide on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. We both have the um, same phones. Um, that's been really good luck. And then even though there's variance with that, shutter speed has been really consistent at 30. Um Because even if I were to take the shutter speed down and then the ISO up... It just it's it's a much blurrier picture, even though it's roughly the same lighting as what I had just said, what I just mentioned there. But, but at least specifically on this night in this location with this phone, with these settings, is kind of where we're at. Um, but it does vary, I will say, um, especially with phone to phone. Like my last phone, which was the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which is actually what I captured in September with the Northern Lights. In order to capture those photos that I did, I actually had to have my ISO at 3200 and shutter speed remaining at 30. And yet, um, even though the shutter speed is remaining the same, we're around 100 give or take now with the ISO. So it's definitely such a big difference depending on what type of camera, what kind of phone you have. So that's why, like he said, especially if you have the shutter speed at 30, it takes 30 seconds to take the photo. So the second the photo is up, the northern lights shifted across the sky one way or the other, whether that means direction or intensity. And not only that you have to, you know, maybe rearrange the direction of your phone, but you also have to keep shifting the ISO a little bit each time. Yeah, now I'm down ISO at 50 and shutter speed at 10 to get the best results. Yeah. So now that we can actually see, that was more of a trend, what I had just said, for when our eyes couldn't pick up the northern lights, but or at least the color, excuse me, couldn't pick up the color. But now that we're picking up the color, it looks like the shutter speed is is now more um, variable now. So like I said, it, it just it, it really depends. Um just depends on absolutely everything. So really just, and then once we got the color, I went off of pro mode um, before I um, went on my video here because it just, at least when I was doing that about, you know, more than 45 minutes ago, it was to the point where it almost looked better in regular mode than pro mode. But I don't know, what is it looking like now? What yeah. is that difference between pro and regular? Uh, big difference now, definitely pro mode reigns. Okay. So, so we're back to pro mode looking better. And like I said, just minutes before I started this video, regular mode was actually better. And then minutes before that, before I started seeing it, pro mode was better. So it really just depends. 
Um, and right now, regular mode overexposes. The yes. Product. I will say, before my eyes saw the color, definitely, yes, it overexposed it way too much. So I had to be on pro mode. But then all of a sudden, when we did get the like 360 degree of Northern Lights, when my eyes captured the color, it actually looked better on regular mode than pro mode. But I guess when you kind of lose the 360 degree angle of everything to where now a lot of the color is only on the northeast now it's back to pro mode being better so it really just depends if i would have known that it would have taken this long for a video and our eyes to see the colors i would have started I wouldn't have rolled my GoPro for the one plus hours, one or two hours that I did, because like I mentioned earlier, they are now dead. <laughs> so if I would have just known that, which obviously I wouldn't have because I've never experienced colors before, um, then I could have just started them later and actually gotten a time lapse of them appearing um, from the video and I standpoint. But, you know, it is what it is. At least I was able to get the abundance of colors at least on video, even though it, it w wouldn't be a dramatic time lapse, but it was definitely a dr uh, dramatic sight, nevertheless. And here's towards actually the west. You can see it's a you know faint, a little faint, uh, you know red purple out that way. And again, the the most that we can see right now is really towards the northeast, generally of that green. But yeah, all I could say in terms of if, you, if you're northern light hunting, you just really got to be patient. Because although you got all the info with, uh, I, like I said, softservenews.com is the best in terms of like, okay, what's happening right now? What's happening in the next 15 minutes? Um, it's definitely the best for that. But um, a lot of times i mean it really just depends it may not even be a lot of times but just a lot of times in my particular experience of where i'm at what settings i have what the weather conditions are like in my experience you know there's just been many times to where it's like you know in theory you would think you would be able to see the lights with your own eyes but then you realize the the camera can only do that and there's so much, there's just so much that goes into that. Because KB could be nine like it is, but then your inbound BZ averages could either be too close to zero or they could be positive. Because really, you want your BZ um, averages to be negative along with the high KB, which also they do link that. Um, that you can also track that in pretty much real time. It's not really so much so. Um, oh, what's going to happen in 15 minutes, an hour, particularly for the BZ averages, but that you can see them basically in real time. So if that's negative. If those are in the negatives and the KP is high enough, that's a pretty good sign. And that's what it started. It just kept going back and forth. But for the most part this evening, that has been the case. But I have noticed that a few of the times that I just stopped looking at the tracker and I just purely just kept taking photos over and over because I didn't want to miss anything. And a couple of times I would stop and then go back to the tracker. I noticed that it was kind of close to zero. And I think briefly it did go positive. So in this particular case, that could be the reason why we just were not seeing the lights with our eyes at first. It's very possible that a lot of that time that I wasn't on the tracker, it was just too close to zero or it was slightly positive, even though KP was 8-9. Um, that could be a very, that, that could, that could, you know, bring a different experience for sure. That could be the reason why. That and um, how quickly the sun setted. Because we were, we, we were like negative 30 for BZ and like, almost nine for KP and the sunset basically an hour 
already at this point. We've already passed an hour of the sunset and nothing was happening even on the on the uh, cameras. And of course, the second that we started to get dark enough, then the BZ kind of creeped up again. But But then it settled back down once again and then we started to see the color on the cameras. So um, I think it's just a combination of waiting uh, long enough after sunset and, uh, again, monitoring those BZ averages along with the KP because if if only one out of those three things are in your favor, you really need three out of three. You need high KP, um, negative BZ, and long enough after um, sunset, at least in, in the States when it's this strong because if you're northern canada or alaska obviously there's you know tons of sources and even people that have experienced were like oh it's great at sunrise and great in sunset but you know in terms of the states in particular you really gotta wait until it gets dark enough to where you can see the stars because when we really started seeing the stars is when the camera started to pick up the colors and then like i said it was i don't know like an hour or so after that is when um, we, you know, it got, it probably got dark enough. It probably got even darker and I'm assuming the BZ kind of dropped. Um, and like I said, I haven't been on the tracker for a little while now, but it's possible KP even went up a little higher and it was at least one of those elements to where that's what triggered, uh, our eyes actually picking up the light. So... That's kind of our experience. As you can see, now it's getting much dimmer now. Um, I'm pretty much back to to seeing exclusively just pillars of light like I experienced before this um, this update of all the colors. You know, there might be a slight little sliver of green, very faint where I'm pointing here right now. But other than that, we are purely back to just... Um, just kind of those pillars of light to the naked eye. And then that's, and then over here towards the south, there's just really nothing. And, um, and even up above now, there, there, there isn't that convergence really anymore of what I was experiencing a little bit ago with all the pillars of light coming close together. And then they go wide once you get further uh, down in elevation into where the convergence look like a big star. Um, like a diagram or something that is really not here anymore um, and really up above and the entire south has been remaining to be free from that unlike what it was at the beginning of this video and now I'm pointing towards the west and we have really we're not really seeing any color now over there northwest though you can see there's a little bit of pink still hanging on and then here's um pretty much the north as that green is now diminishing and we are going back to basically just gray and white pillars of light um really towards the north at this point and that's about all that are here now um there oh i a bit of an update though it looks like there's a little bit of that waving a little bit of that shimmering happening back at the south now it is not the like convergence with that star anymore but that did just appear to where um, not overhead, but kind of more just directly south, um, slightly high. We are getting back to more of that shimmering yet again. But other than that, really all the activity is mostly hanging around the north perimeter of the sky. And like I said, we are diminishing those colors as we speak right now. Um, and uh, for my dad here, when you get a chance, can you go on that website to see what KP and... Uh, those inbound BZ averages are because I'm very curious to see where uh, those would be right now since I want to continue to uh, record to give you an update here. But yeah, the first thing you'll see is KP on that website, softsurfnews.com, and then scroll after you see that, scroll all the way down until you see the uh, inbound BZ. So I can get a little color again. Yeah. So BZ averages are averaging between about 30 to 40 right now. Wow. Negative 30 to 40. Oh, and look, as I said that, look, now we are getting um, 
more of that green on the northern horizon oh, yeah. once again. I see that. So that is a pretty, actually scroll up a little bit all the way up to where we can see the KP um, higher than that. Let's see, where is it? They keep that here. Oh, that's interesting. Now we're down to, uh, it looks like around six KP now. Yet, I am still, as I'm saying that though, uh, it, it's, it's strengthening again. It so, is, yeah. so it looks like it was between about eight to nine KP there, like I said, for a while, but it looks like we did just go through a break to where it weakened back to five and six. So that's your fourth time that has done that in the past 12 hours since the storm even started. It went back down to five or six. I, like again, about for, for about 15 minutes or so. It looks like that's the fourth time that that's happened. But I'm going to go ahead and assume that that tracker is just a few minutes behind. And now we are getting closer to eight once again because we are strengthening yeah. once again. <laughs> So it looks like we're about done with, at least for that particular break of getting back to five or six. Or it is possible, I will tell you that um, that tracker is really accurate, but I have noticed based on some observations from Noah's website, you know, sometimes it's 10 minutes actually too early in its prediction. So sometimes it's a, it's ahead. Um, and sometimes it's like 10 minutes behind. So that is a very good possibility. Um, that it could fluctuate like that. But one thing too is it is possible that maybe it isn't behind or ahead right now because another possibility is the inbound BZ averages, since they're between 30 and 40 right now, um, we've never seen that before in our experience. Keep in mind, actually, I didn't even mention this, but when our KP was at six and seven in September and we captured the colors through the phone, um, even though we did that, uh, like I said, we, we didn't see the color through our eyes. And honestly, that factor could very well be because the inbound BZ averages, I believe, were only like negative 5, negative 10. So it is very well possible that maybe we are still 6 or 7 right now. Or excuse me, 5 or 6 right now. But maybe um, the, since we're, we are creeping back down to negative 40 uh, BZ, maybe those BZs are so high that maybe we don't need as high of a KP. Completely possible. There are just so many variations. Now you can tell we are back to it. We are back to the, what I would say, pretty absurd amount of light to even the yeah. eyes here. Um, it is not the 360 like you saw at the beginning of this video where the entire uh, sky was covered. So we are still pretty much non-existent on the south south perimeter here but the nor the entire north perimeter sky from north from basically there you can see the line where it where it basically dr drops off uh due east and basically the line where it drops off due west right there uh where the entire northern perimeter is just back to the absurd amount of light even to the naked eye so we are now running at about 11.50 p.m. So this has been happening for about an hour. And like I said, there's been very minimal breaks. There obviously has been variation in the strength where it has kind of gotten dimmer, gotten, gotten stronger for sure. But um, other than it looks like what we just came out of for the past 15 minutes, it looks like it's been very consistent where we really have just continued the KP-8 other than, you know, for the past 15 minutes, now that we're coming out of the weaker five and six. But other than that, during this particular um, period, and I'm pretty sure the period before when you saw the 360 all around, and then it basically went non-existent for just a second, and then it came back on the northern perimeter, I think those were the only two times we dipped down to about five or six KP. But other than that, it has just been steady at about eight. It looks like we are now approaching eight once again. With those inbound BZ averages still crazy at negative 40. And I, I believe it peaked at, at least when I've been on the website today, negative 50 during the day today. So again, unheard of. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Kind of 
walking back into our field over here. Kind of see what we can see more on the northwest horizon. You can see if you see that light right there, that's actually just some light shining through the window of the house right there. It's actually not that bright in real life. It just, the camera's actually making it look a lot brighter than it actually is. Um, but the, it looks like, yeah, in this particular period, I guess the, the lights are slightly brighter than what I see in person, but um, they're not too far off. I mean, at least at the beginning of this video, it was identical to what I saw through uh, the camera, just to be clear. It was identical to what I saw. Right this minute, yeah, definitely slightly brighter, but I'm definitely still seeing those colors. Honestly, it could be because I did stop and start the video at one point. Like when it was getting at the beginning of this, I did have kind of a cut because I was trying to pan and um, and figure out pro mode video and that didn't work. So I switched right back. Um, so it's possible because I got my phone on video once it was already surreal 360 degree. It's possible it was already focused like really well on that because it was just so bright that it looked exactly the same and then when I started it and started it up again it was I think slightly weaker but still pretty intense um or maybe it was vice versa but I th that might be because because it was just it was focused on one thing and I stopped it and it probably auto uh focused slightly different when I started the video again so that could be why this seg this past almost hour now I've been recording you know, maybe slightly dimmer than what I see in person, but still pretty intense for sure. I still think the video is uh, the best representation of what I see with my eyes as physically possible because the photos are just crazy. But like I said, if we can get back to that 360 degree um, aurora around the sky, like we saw at the beginning of this video, like I said, that was identical. Even the photos at that point were pretty much identical to what I was seeing. Um, actually, I might take that back. I think they were pretty intense, but it was just so intense already through just the, just my eyes. It was just kind of hard to keep track, but I will say the video is pretty close. Still nothing on the south perimeter here, but still staying strong. Actually, now that I say that, it looks like it's dimming again. Wow, incredible. Yeah, so now the it's kind of receding more north now. It's not as far west, and now it's dimmer even on the north perimeter once again. Oh yeah, now we're really dimming back once again. Um, we are now 11.55 p.m. But it's basically been staying strong for an hour. <laughs> what is your just reactions to this? You know, you already kind of talked about it, but it just, it's still just one of the things where it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. It is. I mean, it's just like being this, this awesome witness to God's creation and, and, uh, it's just been an incredible experience. So, and weather's perfect. I know. Here, so. It's on any other day. I, if I'm not wrong, we did get to KP8 about a month ago but it was i believe during the day <laughs> and it did not last at night and the inbound bz averages were only you know in like the negative single digits so um that's the difference between then and now and i believe the same thing happened several months ago but it wasn't because it was during the day it was actually at night but it was completely overcast here so those are experiences that we've had, uh, which completely, uh, which are completely different from this. Again, no cloud in the sky. And at first, when this first started to pop up, not with the colors around us, but with the colors picking up on the phone about like an hour and a half after sunset, um, 
I actually almost thought that Hayes was moving in on some sort of, you know, whether that be, um, I know there's really not any wildfire, wildfires around, but, you know, it just, it, it looked like that. Or maybe it was some sort of pollution that it almost looked like. That's kind of what I was thinking. But but then as the the night went on, it was very obvious that it was the northern lights. Like before we started to see the colors with our eyes, you could see the outline of like the gray and white pillars. Uh, it was, I'm seeing more shimmering over here now towards the northeast. At least I briefly did. Yeah, yeah I'm still seeing it. It's not as crazy as what we saw in the south about 45 minutes ago. But... Or even, I think I saw that again, like, not too long ago, like 15, 20 minutes ago as well. But I, it, it, there is some shimmering. I don't know if it's really... Actually, no, I, 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 you, you see it, actually, everybody on the video right now. You do see it on video. Um, the colors are actually much weaker yet again. It keeps going back and forth. Oh, that, that's kind of a cool look. It looks like you can kind of see... It's kind of the shimmering. You can see the, it almost looks like the stars are sh uh, are almost on top of the northern lights and they're shimmering, but that's purely just it shimmering um, on top of the stars, which is a which is a great look. But uh, this actually, even though the color is much dimmer now, yet again we're we're at dimming. The uh, shimmering is actually increasing. And because the shimmering is taking place on top of to where it's, you know, there's at least some color, unlike the southern perimeter right now, you, you could a actually see some of the shimmering. Because before, it, was, it wasn't actually over really any color. It was more just um, kind of where there wasn't as much color. So that's really why you couldn't see it. But definitely different experience now. Um, which is incredible because before I know my dad and I were out here in September last year and, um, we, yeah, we saw the gray pillars of light that were obviously much fainter than earlier this evening, but, oh, well, now I'm getting the green popping up, uh, Northeast right now. You just saw that appear on camera there and we're getting more of a pillar now. Wow. That's really now it's intensifying right on the horizon. But as I was saying, like you remember when we were out here in um, September, and although we saw the pillars of light, uh, like it was so faint that we couldn't see it move or anything. That was it. Um, but now because it's so strong, we can see the northern lights move, which is absolutely incredible. It Wait. is, and in, in the images that I'm capturing, I think, really speaks to um, not only the the evolution of Samsung, you know, smartphone technology, but I think they've really become the the new standard in cameras. I mean, it's just they're just this is just incredible. What, yeah, you know, our modern day smartphone can can capture now. Yeah. Looks like that little pillar just kind of decreased again. It was intensifying and then kind of went back. But, um, oh yeah, now we're really, we're decreasing or diminishing once again. Oh yeah, but then as I said that, that little pillar on the northeast horizon there, it's kind of, it's kind of coming, it just keeps going back and forth. It's definitely much dimmer than what it was even however many minutes ago. But, um, but now I'm getting more something due east now. It looks like, most of the activity on the north is really trying to go away. But if you point your camera right to due east, we're still getting some color there. Slightly intense color on the video. No, and the sky is actually brighter now. Yeah, overall. <laughs> I see that. Yeah. Yeah, now, now that I keep saying that, as I'm saying that, we're actually um, now really intensifying due east. So although the colors have almost diminished on the north, even though they're northern lights, now we're getting intense lights on the east now. Um, and now that's going back a little bit to the south, um, which you can kind of see a little bit now. This is south. Um, so now we're, we're going back to this now, which is kind of what we began with before I did the 360. So that'll be interesting to see if, 
if if this means we're going to go back to that crazy 360, um, as you can see, there's more of that light now going um, further hi or higher now um, above the southern perimeter, even though the west and north is pretty much um, died down quite a bit. Although now it looks like the north is getting a little bit more color now, but it's definitely intensifying absolutely crazy on the east now so and if this is i mean this is like i said pretty close to what our eyes see um i can't imagine what the photos he's getting over here as the camera obviously can let in so much more of that light that we can't see as much um so what's well, what are the photos looking like if this is kind of what i see with my eyes now yet again what are the photo wow that's cool yeah, just lots of color saturation. It's, it's awesome. So you you briefly saw that it wasn't really focused, but you just you can see how much intense color that was. So yeah, I am so amazed on how long this has lasted. You would think, <laughs> since this has been running for almost twelve hours now, that um that by the time it got dark here, I mean, it, it was incredible for it to even last that long anyway by the time it got dark here, but let alone it lasting for now more than an hour <laughs> here. I mean, I, this is definitely the most historic storm, like I said, that we've had since 2003, since for before I was born. Oh, wow, now we're getting more... We're starting to get more intense light towards the north yet again. Um, maybe some faint color on the west a little bit, but overall, that's still saying pretty dark. Here's the south, again, trying to work its color in a little bit over that way, but it's really just the east that it's just... that is definitely providing the most insane colors yet again. Really northeast, because now we're getting more due north again. Oh uh, yeah, we are intensifying yet again. You really can see that. And I keep having to to reduce the shutter speed because it's so bright. Yep. Because it just changes. It's like the minute the obviously the higher the shutter speed, longer it takes to take the photo. So like if you, if, you, if you had it on 30, which we kind of did to start, it takes 30 seconds to take the photo, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it just got brighter or just got dimmer or it moved directions, and I have to tinker with it all over again. But at least I feel like we, we got kind of got a good rhythm down on the very small chance that this ever happens again in our lifetime. At least we have the rhythm yeah. on what to do. <laughs> Even though I will say, you know, it may be, if that were to happen, it may be, a completely different learning experience because like like you saw it was a huge difference from the samsung note 20 versus the s24 it was a big yeah. difference in iso and shutter speed so you know you may kind of just have to learn every single time but i think at least we got a rhythm down now if this were ever to happen again and the key really is this patience and this commitment and you just keep taking the pictures and keep taking the pictures. And yeah. um, I know that we're going to have, you know, probably a hundred really, really good photos. Mm -hmm. And a thousand okay yeah, photos. Yeah. Is we literally have been, other than when we kind of took a break for about 15 minutes to, oh, that reminds me. Um, We flew the drone before we saw the lights, didn't we? Yeah before we saw the color yeah we um that we probably should get back to that yeah, now that we're thinking about it yeah. because we we had a drone out here as we, we expected like once like regular video mode started to get it that we could fly the drone in it you could see that uh but the issue was the the photos were only capturing it and we couldn't get it on video and our eyes couldn't see it so we took a break about a break for about 15 minutes Stopped taking taking photos because it was weakening a little bit. It looked like, um, and then we went to the drone. 
but like for the past like three hours we've been basically taking other than you know a couple breaks like that we've been taking photos no joke every like 30 seconds so we probably we probably have like a thousand photos oh yeah um but yeah, now I'm thinking about it since we this is historic. We got the lights going on in real life to our eyes. We probably should start up the drone again and see if we can get anything. Yeah. Um, we should have thought of that when it was a 360 at the very beginning of this when it was even brighter colors and it was all around. But I just wasn't thinking, obviously, because he, I stopped taking photos, so I... You know, he was busy taking photos all around, and then I went to video, which I'm glad I did because, you know, that actually would have sucked to miss the 360 and in really good quality. But, you know, um, it would have still been, it would that would have been the optimal time for the drone if I, I would have been thinking about it. But now we're, that we're getting more of an increase yet again, yeah. probably good to get the drone going. Well, it was such a good light show. I didn't want to get off the camera. Exactly. Either, so that's why exactly. I didn't want to risk going to the drone and not capturing yeah. this. So. And now that we, if we would have known it would last almost an hour and a half now, um, we probably would have. But for all we know, it would have lasted thirty seconds, maybe. Right. So it's like, yeah, you don't. The obviously it's great to have as many camera angles as possible, but you know. It's like you got to really just experience it and do the best that you can because for all you know it could it could last for 30 seconds or it could last for multiple hours and in our case we're really lucky and it's been lasting for multiple hours but oh we're definitely okay I think we're I think we're we may get a return of the 360 aurora because um look now we're starting to get you can kind of see it. I don't know how well this is capturing. In, in this case, uh, I could actually see it slightly better with my eyes. But we are starting to get that crazy star figure I was talking about, where it kind of is close together and then widens the further lower in elevation you go out towards the south. And now we're getting more color over here, and it's starting to widen now. Here's the west. So we honestly may get even if it's not quite the intensity as, as it was at the beginning of this, we may uh, be getting the return of this 360 experience. So honestly, now would be a good time to start getting the drone out, to be completely honest. Yeah, we might as well do that. Yeah. Honestly, I would just keep this recording for you guys. Um... And once I give him the drone stuff, I'll still pan and everything. I'll just keep my phone steady just for a minute so I can go grab the, or set it, or turn it all on again, the drone. Um, but yeah, absolutely incredible. Oh, wow, we're getting a pretty cool pillar here that almost looks like it's, like it's coming down on that tree there above the house. Um, but yeah, you can kind of tell. Oh yeah, see, now, now this is this is across the, this is like southeast right overhead. And, or excuse me, southwest right overhead. And notice how we're starting to get that. I'm definitely, oh yeah, the, the that cool star effect that I was talking about is now back overhead. And I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, but it is now back. Absolutely incredible. So I'm going to keep this, I think that's probably the best space to be kind of there just for a second while I set up the drone. But yeah, yeah, that star, like whatever you would describe, that is incredible. And it's crazy seeing like where you can see the line where it ends. I mean, like, like I said, this is something that you would see in like the Santa Claus where you get this crazy like movie effect. Yeah. Again, it's very hard to capture that part on camera. Definitely the can or the excuse me, uh, the video portion of that. Photos are actually easier to do that with, um, but and the videos are better for the color. Um, 
It looks like we are weakening again, but knowing this pattern, we're probably going to go right back to it. <laughs> Well, actually, it looks like we're getting an increase of that cool pillar convergence star thing and actually a bit of a decrease, actually a lot of a decrease now that I'm seeing it on the color. Interesting to see how that works. It's kind of work. There's two kind of elements to it that don't necessarily coincide together. So yeah, now we're definitely weakening those colors again. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. It's like, I know I just said I was about to get the drone, but I'm just distracted with like every second I'm panning and noticing that it's different. Like it goes from being in a particular spot and being brighter to then being dimmer and then in another spot. It's like, it's crazy. Just keep panning this. I'm distracted by that because it just come. It changes every second. But yeah, now you notice. I, I'm obviously still seeing the pillars, but now the the light is actually almost uh, the colors. Excuse me, are almost now non-existent yet again. So we're still getting some nice pillars around, which are actually, like I said, better to capture with the eyes than the video and slightly vice versa with the colors. But yeah, now it looks like the colors have, based, uh, have really backed off, but again, like I'm definitely not calling this potential for the colors off because as you know, every second it changes dramatically. We are now 12, 14 a.m. But yeah, now that it's so much dimmer, you, you can definitely tell that the quality of the video is much worse. It's much fuzzier because it's definitely dimmer yet again. Um, looks like there there may be a little bit of color trying to regenerate due east. But yeah, you can even tell that it was just so bright. Even the landscape was bright. The yeah. sky was bright just several minutes ago. Now we're definitely a lot darker again. But yeah, other than that little thing that's trying to uh, regenerate, the colors are non-existent again. Um, so at least for now, I was wrong in terms of that 360 regenerating, but it just it goes back and forth depending on just what's happening. What are you uh, capturing on camera? Because with my eyes and and video here, other than the pillars of light coming down the colors are basically gone for the time being yep so what are you capturing with the with the photos i'm assuming you can still see colors on that yeah just red That's red it. okay actually now i feel like my eyes are starting to pick up a little bit of pink or red due west now actually my camera is actually not even showing that but i feel like i see a slight faint just with my eyes because I can tell over here that if anything, this is basically gray or white with a slight green. And then I turn over here and my eyes are picking up a slightly different color tone. So I can actually tell, even though the video isn't really showing that for the time being. It goes back and forth from like, I will say that, like like I've been saying, the, this video is the best representation ever in terms of what the eye sees. But... Uh, but definitely, it goes back and forth from my eyes actually being slightly better and then the camera being, or the video, excuse me, being slightly better. But it is definitely, um, it's incredible here. Or it was, and now it looks pretty much non-existent now. Yeah, it's really changed. Yeah, now it's just, now I just cannot see any colors. Like I said, I still see pillars, but they're faint. And they're, they don't have color to them. Are you still capturing some of those? No, uh, like nothing. Oh, wow. A little bit of red, that's it. Wow, that changed. Yeah. That changed very dramatically. Go back, briefly go to Kate. 
the KP tracker is I'm curious to see if we are now plummeting now. Um, might have to reload the site here. Oh no, I mean, at least KP is still in the sevens and it, it wants us to get back up to eight in this in oh, a yeah. bit. But I wonder if, oh, see? Oh yeah. There's your plus five. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. So this is, this kind of proves my point earlier. You need these BZ averages to be negative because, um, I will say that this is just a few minutes behind an app I have, which shows these uh, BZ averages a little bit. Um, you can go back to photos there uh, that are just a few minutes behind because I can see basically what that sees, but in a graph that is a few minutes earlier. Um, so that basically is indicating that right this second, yeah, KP is still between seven and eight, but we are now basically positive BZ averages. So that is a huge factor. Definitely a huge factor. Because now, okay, I, well, I am seeing shimmering right now directly above me, but they're not colored. Um, I will say that the pillars of light, it looks like are almost um, there's a few faint ones, but for the most part, not only the color is diminished, uh, but most of the uh, pillars, at least on the horizon, are gone. But for somehow, above me, there are still some pillars of light, which honestly you cannot, or not, excuse me, oh yeah, pillars of light just not colored. And they are still shimmering, actually, which is very interesting to see. Um, honestly, that kind of makes sense. Um, I feel like th this is definitely a learning experience in terms of keeping track of that because I could make a correlation that, um, high KP could still always bring pillars in shimmering up above. Um, obviously that varies depending on what you're at. Um, in every way, but it just in terms of comparing it, we have absolutely no color now, but yet I can still see pillars that are shimmering above me, um, which makes sense because we're still KP8, 7 or whatever, but if the averages, the BZs are so positive that I guess that honestly makes sense why we're not seeing color. But then once you go back to negative BZ, there's your color. So at least that's actually very good to know. Very interesting. Because, yeah, I'm getting shimmering still a little bit above me and kind of towards the west, western sky here. Um, which, like I said, because with the lack of light, <laughs> the camera can't really pick it up. So in this case, my eyes can see it much better okay now we're starting to get some color back on the northeast again you can start to see it's slightly brighter and you can see there it there is a faint green to it so we're starting to get that back so i'm going to go ahead and assume that we're we are going back into the negative bz territory this is my best guess is now, yep, fake green back on the northeast. And there isn't really color due east, but it it's getting brighter now, due east. And then some faint color northeast. So, looks like those averages are coming back to negative, which is always a great thing to see. And we are uh, 12.21 a.m. right now.
But so far, probably not too much in, significantly in those negatives, as we're still pretty faint. But I would guess they're definitely more so that direction than they just were a few minutes ago. Incredible. Oh yeah, and then we're getting, again, I can't really capture on camera because there's no light in the background <laughs> of the shimmery pillars, but they are doing that once again overhead. Uh, they're more stronger now. And yeah, there's they're starting to get slightly greener, more so northeast. And even though the camera's not picking it up, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting the return of maybe a slight red tone out of the corner of my eye on the western sky. But obviously this is brighter and it's green and the camera can pick it up. Yeah, now I'm picking up green again. Yep. Well, I think I'm going to cut this for now. We're about an hour and a half of straight recording, which is obviously awesome. Um, but it looks like it is increasing at about almost 1230 now. It's starting to strengthen a bit again. Um, I will, I might start the video. Uh, I might start another clip if it gets pretty intense again. But otherwise, I'm kind of going to go back to taking more photos and we may start up the drone too, so that may or may not be the next uh, clip you see um, if it does get brighter. When you want